Hello and welcome to the BA Knowledge Share. In this episode, I go over Chapter 2 of the Baybal Guide, specifically the section around stakeholders. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, stakeholders, this is Section 2.4 of the Baybal Guide. A stakeholder is an individual or group that a business analyst is likely to interact with directly or indirectly. Now, what are the different um, roles of a stakeholder? And the Baybalk Guide has listed quite a comprehensive list of stakeholders. Business analyst is the first one. You as a business analyst is inherently a stakeholder in all business analysis activities. Baybook Guide presumes that the business analyst is responsible and accountable for the execution of these activities. So the BA is inherently a stakeholder. So you, you wanna make sure that you don't leave them out. You could be on a project where you have multiple business analysts on the effort. In that case, your peers, business analysts would be stakeholders as well. You yourself as a BA are, is, are a stakeholder. Um, a, on an effort or in a project, so keep that in mind. The next one is a customer. A customer uses or may use products or services produced by the enterprise and may have contractual or moral rights that the enterprise is obliged to meet. Very straightforward stakeholder in this case would be the user of a website. So user of a website is a customer that uses the website or the products or the services on that website. So in that case, it's a very clear cut stakeholder. However, there may be instances where you may not have a direct customer that you deal with. And that could be very well in an enterprise where the um, customer is represented by a subject matter expert. Um, so just, just be wary of, um, you know, your stakeholders and who the users are and who can actually provide you with information that you need as a business analyst. The next one is a domain subject matter expert. A domain subject matter expert is any individual with in-depth knowledge of a topic relevant to the business need or solution scope. This role is often filled by people who may be end users or people who have in-depth knowledge of the solutions such as managers, process owners, legal staff, consultants, and others. The next stakeholder is the end user. An end user are stakeholders who directly interact with the solution. End users can include all participants in the business process or who use the product or solution. So many times I get asked a question, well, what the, what's the difference between a customer and an end user? It depends on the project you're on. So in the earlier example I gave is you could be on an enterprise level project where your operations folks are the end users, right? So you don't have necessarily a customer in who's using like a website scenario where they're using the website to buy uh, products and services. You could have operations folks that are, you, that are your end user and your customer that are kind of using the product or solution to perform their day-to-day -day tasks, okay? The next one is the implementation subject matter expert. An implementation subject matter expert is any stakeholder who has specialized knowledge regarding the implementation of one or more solution components. Examples are project librarians, change managers, configuration managers, the one very popular one is solution architects, developers, database administrators, information architect, usability and analyst, trainer and organizational change consultant. So you could have multiple implementation subject matter experts on a project. It all depends upon the effort, right? And in some instances, you may just have a developer or in some instances, you may have a solution architect if you have that role in your organization and a developer. So it all depends upon who you're dealing with um, in terms of the effort. The next uh, stakeholder is an operational support. Operational support is responsible for the day-to-day -day management and maintenance of a system or product. So the key word here is maintenance. Um, example, operations analyst, product analyst, 
help desk and release manager, or they could be a production support specialist in, in this case. So think of those sort of technical roles as operations, operational support rather than uh, more so like operations, um, people handling the phones um, on the front line. So this is more of a backend kind of uh, stakeholder role. The next one is project manager. Project managers are responsible for managing the work required to deliver a solution that meets a business need and for ensuring that the project's objectives are met while balancing the project factors, including scope, budget, schedule, resources, quality, and risk. Example um, roles are project lead, technical lead, product manager, and team leader. So project managers help you kind of maneuver through project efforts and business analysts and project managers work very closely. And in some instances, um, seen where you have scrum masters and project managers working side, you know, performing the same sort of role, or you could have like a delivery lead um, in your organization that you're working with that manages the budget, schedule, the scope. Um, the last, <clears throat> the, the, the next one on the list is the regulator. Regulators are responsible for definition and enforcement of standards. Standards can be imposed on the solution by regulators through legislation, corporate governance standards, audit standards, or standards defined by the organizational centers of competency. Alternate roles are government, regulatory bodies, and auditor. So examples of a regulator could be in your organization, the audit area within your company. They may need to be involved. Um, compliance is another area that needs to be involved. Um, other external sort of regulators could be your health board um, regulators, or your um, government officials that, that need to be engaged in this effort that you're working on. Um, and sometimes you may have within your enterprise, um, people, folks from compliance, or there may be a separate regula regulatory or uh, department that, that represents um, the government's um, um, viewpoint, if you will. So in that case, you would kind of leverage what's in your organization to uh, represent the stakeholder. The next one is a sponsor. Sponsors are responsible for initiating the effort to define a business need and develop a solution that meets that need. They authorize the work to be performed and control the budget and scope for the initiative. Alternate roles are executive and project sponsors. So in this case, you have a sponsor uh, or a business sponsor in some cases, an executive sponsor that handles the um, that handles basically the, the budget and the authorization. In some instances, you may have a sponsor who takes an active role in making sure that you get the requirements you need. Um, they could also be play dual roles of a sponsor and a subject matter expert. So it depends upon the complexity of the effort the size of the project, the size of the organization. So in that case, keep in mind, making sure that you understand you know, this person's playing a sponsor role, but at the same time, this person's wearing, uh, playing a dual role of a SME. So there could be overlaps there. Supplier, a supplier is a stakeholder outside the boundary of a given organization organizational unit. Suppliers provide products or services to the organization and may have contractual or moral rights and obligations that must be considered. Alternate roles are providers, vendors, and consultants. So you may be working on an effort. Um, I think in my earlier uh, videos, I provided an example of a conversion project where you're moving um, data from one vendor to another vendor or one vendor to an in-house effort. So in that case, you would, um, you would include your vendors as part of your stakeholders in order to ensure that you have the right requirements or the right data mapping um, work. Okay, so that's, uh, that, that, that's kind of the role of a supplier. The last on the list is, uh, is a tester. A tester is responsible for determining how to verify the solution um, and that the solution meets the requirements defined by the business analyst, as well as conducting the verification process. Testers also seek to ensure that the solution meets applicable quality standards and that the risk of defects or failures is understood and minimized. 
an alternate role is quality assurance analyst. So depends upon whether you're in an agile effort or if in, you're in an SDLC methodology, your tester could be very well be the business analyst itself, right? So it, you play dual roles in that case, you yourself are a stakeholder as a tester. In an SDLC framework, you can have a separate test team where you have testers as your stakeholders. Um, in that case, if you, if you have a QA lead, a quality assurance lead, you would engage the quality assurance lead in your JAD sessions or JAR sessions as you move along um, and then engage the testers at a later point once you start building the test cases. So testers are also um, key in terms of stakeholders. So just to kind of wrap up and summarize this section, we went over um, who a stakeholder is, the different types of stakeholders. We started off with the business analyst, customer, domain subject matter expert, end user implementation subject matter expert, operational support, project manager, regulator, sponsor, supplier, and last is tester. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Uh, please do consider subscribing to this channel and um, please do visit my website at baknowledgeshare.com. Once again, that's ba, b as in boy, a knowledgeshare.com. Thank you and until next time.